This video is called The Most Honest Devs in Gacha Gaming. It was around my recommended feed, just never really got around to it, but I'm bored right now and I want to react to something. And I noticed that my algorithm still favors Genshin Impact. So let's see if this has, you know, that game inside of this video. <laughs> who knows? I'm going to give you guys a little advice and nobody's going to listen to me because who listens to somebody like me? Like, I don't look attractive. I am not an influencer in any way, shape, or form. I just tell you how it is. I just tell you how I honestly feel. And I tell you just the way things are. And if you don't like it, then suck it up. Gotchas will ruin your life. Get your shit together. Fix the way you are. Because gotchas are literally the matrix of gaming. Gotchas are going to make you so antisocial, insecure, sensitive, and the most unlikable people in society. You are a loser if you play gotcha games. Leave while you still can. Because these developers in a lot of gotcha games don't give a shit who you are. They only want your money. They make the game specifically for you to waste your time. That's why you grow impatient trying to complete the story farm and then try to pull for characters it was designed to make you spend money and if you don't spend money you're going to be wasting time that's it that's all you're going to be doing for the same rinse and repeat that you're going to hate every single day and i don't know how people can still tolerate this type of gameplay you're addicted and you're brain rotted kuro games just released news on their latest sets of quality of life updates and it's safe to say that they're absolutely amazing Things like echo presets between characters, a portable synthesizer for crafting materials, and echo display of stats and sonata on drop. These are all features that have been highly requested by the player base, and they all work towards one simple goal. Make Wuthering Waves a more enjoyable game. The only reason why it's not going to be an enjoyable game is because it's a gacha game. I get that the devs are really honest. They have proven themselves giving us rewards and all that. But, gotcha games are gotcha games. Let's be honest here. Gotcha games are gotcha games. They're not fun. When the Kuro devs, Dong and Awen, told us during the 1.3 reveal live stream that they've been listening to our feedback and that they want more, they weren't lying. Every single time these developers open their mouths or type on their keyboard, they're telling the truth. They genuinely want to make the game better. Looking at the track record of Kuro games across the lifetime of Wuthering Waves, it's been nothing but clear communication, complete transparency, and fulfilled promises to the player base. And that's good and all, but the only thing that I really liked about the game is just the art style. That's it. Other than that, it just reminded me of Genshin 2.0 at the end of the day, but with better developers. Even when faced with the harshest critiques, they make it better. It's the complete pull. That's what I really liked right there. You get to choose a five star of your choice. You can choose a five star of your choice and then pull for them. That was really cool. But other than that, this game really sucked, especially with optimization. It's just a Genshin 2.0 with better developers at the end of the day. Polar opposite from what we've seen from games like Genshin Impact. Yeah, Genshin is just far more worse. The beginning stages of Genshin when it released during COVID was like the biggest game changer. And it, it just really changed the way that we played video games in our generation. It was like very immersive and life changing. But after years went on, it's just full of filler. It really is just full of filler, and I hate the fact that they still don't have a skip button in this game. It is a gotcha game after all, so what can we do? Not a thing. But yet, there is games like Zelda Zone Zero made by the same developers. Different, well, different sub-part of the developers in Hoyoverse. Right? They have a skip button. I can actually tolerate that. I can actually tolerate playing Zone Zone Zero because I can just skip gameplay, story and all that. Here? Uh-uh. They want you to, to brain rot. They want you to feel like life is just full of shit. It's just like a waste of time. And what am I even doing here? After we all saw the way cry live on stage, lamenting the state of his game. I heard about that. I heard about this dude crying or whatever. Many expected Genshin Impact to genuinely get better. When the Genshin community saw the version 5.0 teasers, there was a lot of ex Never fall for anything what uh, Hoyoverse related. Never fall for anything. I cannot stand. I cannot stand how many people simp for this company. 
excitement for all of the new features getting added to the game. Things like a custom artifact selector, new exploration mechanics, and summonable pets. L like, what is this gonna do to the game? Nothing at all! The problem how- this, this is just for casual gamers. It really is for just casual gamers. They're not changing anything uh, gameplay related. They're not changing anything that needs to be fixed in Genshin Impact. Like, I am so glad I escaped the gotcha hell. The gotcha matrix. Like, I have changed a whole lot ever since. And I just really don't care about gotchas anymore. I, I try setting foot into Genshin Impact, Wuthering Waves, or something like that's open world. I cannot stand it. I try Zenless Zone Zero. I can tolerate it, but I cannot play it every single day like I used to. I cannot play any gacha game anymore. I really can't. However, was that the integration of all these new mechanics was a complete joke, with many restrictions and unnecessary FOMO fueled strings. That's Genshin for you. Like, I don't know why people would be so mad when they have treated us like shit, like for the past three, four years. They did the same stuff every single day, every single update, every single year. And nobody, nobody listened. Nobody cared. And who made the change? I did. I was the only one that escaped. I was the only one that knew their schemes because it's gotcha. Attached. And players didn't find out about any of these problems until the version was live. Ask yourself, why did Hoyoverse hide so many details about the update that was worth the CEO himself crying over? There's a reason why a majority of- And, and you know another thing? They have been trying to crack down a bunch of leakers in the Genshin space for leaking any characters or whatever. But why do they care so much when the game is just complete shit? Why do they care so much about what's being leaked when they're not giving us any good content? Oh, you, you see what I'm talking about here? Do you see where I'm coming from? If you're still in that mindset that the game is still good and, and nothing is bad at all, you are delusional. Wake the fuck up. Kuro's 1.3 livestream was dedicated to quality of life updates and improvements to the game. They were proud of their work and wanted to show it off in depth, and they had full confidence that their implementation would be well received by the player base. That's what happens when you listen with the full intent of making real changes, with no ulterior motives. And once you understand this, you can see the reason why Hoyerverse consistently does the opposite when it comes to the reveal of- Yeah, I, I totally respect, I totally respect Wuthering Waves devs for what they've done for the community um, as far as listening and giving us rewards as an apology. I think that it was a major W on their end, but at the end of the day, I, I will not play their game. I, I really will not play their game because I just cannot tolerate an open world gotcha game anymore. I really just can't. I want to enjoy gaming. I don't want to feel like I'm being locked by some paywall of having to use energy or whatever to farm. And I'm just tired of just like trying to farm for things that are RNG, you know? I'm tired of it. I want guaranteed. I want to feel like I did something. Not feel hopeless every time I try to play a gacha game, you know? What happened to actual gaming? Nowadays, it's corporate greed. It is literally corporate worldwide. Not even just corporate America, it's corporate worldwide greed of their uh, improvements to the game. Today, we'll be diving into why this is the case. Breaking down the stellar track record of Kuro Games over the past four months, how and why it differs so much from the embarrassing behavior we've seen from Hoyaverse as they've entered Natlan, and how this dynamic impacted and will continue to impact the gacha community as a whole. Ignoring player feedback is bad, but claiming you listen to feedback while doing less than the bare minimum in your integration, that's worse. That's an insult to yeah, I, I already expected Hoyovers to keep throwing shit at us that we don't care about. Like, they really think they're listening to us. No, they don't They don't give a shit. They just want your money at the end of the day. They're super rich as is, but yet they still don't care what we want. And they only listen to the Chinese player base. They only listen to the Chinese player base. Like, anybody could rant. Anybody could complain and send feedback to Hoyovers, but they only listen to the Chinese player base. And what do we get? Nothing. To your players. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that like and subscribe button.
Genshin Impact players have had it pretty rough for the past few months, with the emotional or completely planned outburst from Del yeah, Wei across just, the pre-launch of just Natland, get this guy off many players screen. were convinced that version 5.0 was going to change the game completely. They <laughs> when is any update gonna change the game completely? The only time the game changes is when there's a new main story quest, new region, that's it. Other than that, they'd like to milk the updates out. People really think that the version 0 .1, 0 .2, like, for example, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5 .5 is going to be a major change. No, this is indicating that it's just filler content until 5 to 6 is the major co like content. 4 to 5, 3 to 4, 2 to 3. You get what I mean, right? It's just, it, that's how it's organized. You, you, you should just wait until the major update comes out and then start playing again but the but the problem is when you do that your 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 inactivity it, it just builds up so much that you feel like you're wasting your time you don't want to even want to complete any of the Content they saw previews because of you're far behind. new exploration mechanics, exciting integrations of pets, and even a customized artifact selector. It genuinely seemed like... You know what? Here, here's what I'm going to say, and I've said it multiple times. Give us more player base, like more player count and multiplayer. Give us like a 20 player based multiplayer, or even more than that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Give us an MMO experience. I'm just saying, give us an MMO experience. People are going to tell me that this is the wrong game. Like, you're just wasting your time ranting about this stuff. But this is definitely what's going to fix the game. I think there should be more players in multiplayer. I think there should be a skip button. I think that they need to get rid of all this useless RNG garbage. They need to get rid of the resin. Right? They need to get rid of the resin system. They need... To add more interactivity to the game, right? They need to add more interactivity to the game. They need to make Spiral Abyss multiplayer. They need to make a lot of things multiplayer. Because, like, what's the point of playing an online game that's single player and you can only have, like, four people in a map, right? And you can't even play story without being online. Like, this is just nonsense. It's just nonsense playing this shit. And, and not only that, it's a mobile game that's taken like almost half of your space on your phone i can literally tolerate it because i have a pc but this these mobile players they just have wasted space on their phone i'm sorry to say it you have wasted space on your phone you should literally play something else Hoyaverse wanted to make Genshin a better game. Unfortunately, all of these features were either complete fluff or so poorly integrated that their implementation was an actual here just Compress your files. Make them smaller. Give us a skip button and stop making Paimon reiterate everything that we talk about. And also, stop giving us encyclopedias worth of dialogue. It's so annoying. Even in English dub, I'm not even paying attention. What, whatever language I'm listening to, I'm not even paying attention because the story is just dog shit. Insult to the player base. Exploration mechanics locked to a single region out of the six on the map. Pets that are only used to solve exploration puzzles in that one region. A custom artifact every few months that still has the potential to roll like absolute doo-doo water. There's a reason why Hoyaverse didn't go into an in-depth explanation of these new features. Because, because they knew it was shit. They know it's shit. And they're just giving us all this stuff and just getting, you know, a cash grab. It's just a cash grab idea. Low effort. The whole mindset of business, the whole mindset of the gotcha business and just business overall is do less, make more. They want to make more out of you and give anything, give nothing to you in return. Because they knew their player base would not be happy with it. The question is, why develop new features that players are not going to like in the first place? Kuro like Games, who asked, on the other hand. Who asked for these things that they're giving to the player base? I don't even play anymore, but who asked? Who asked for these new items? 
No one has never pulled their punches when it comes to the details with their updates. Whenever these developers announce a quality of life update, a new exploration mechanic, or an optimization to the game, it's completely clear to the players what they're doing. When players complained about no echo experience or tuners, they cited that complaint in their developer notes and subsequently added a boatload of these resources to every future event in the game. When players got a free Shangli Yao, a limited 5 star and complained about the lack of character leveling materials, Kuro again cited this complaint in their developer notes and announced multiple new events in version 1.3 specifically targeted to these resources. And when players complained about the clunkiness of swapping overworld characters to complete aiming challenges, there's already clunkiness to the game. Like, didn't these devs have Genshin in the background to try to compare it so that then the whole performance of this game is just flopped. It, it, it's just clunky. Not only that, you know why you know what I hate about this game, especially with Genshin? They're locked at 60 FPS. You cannot go any higher than that unless you got like some third party software or something. Or you went into the personal files and changed it yourself. You're not getting guaranteed the FPS you want, but you're getting, you know, an increase. Like, they need to optimize this very, very well, especially for the mid-range phones and low-range phones, if they want their game to keep surviving, right? They need to have better optimization. They need to have more FPS, because there's people out there who play more than 60 FPS and tired of seeing 60. The game's already clunky as it is, and not only that, the, the, um, the rendering... It, isn't it Unreal Engine 5 that they're using for this game? Yeah, have fun with that. If, if you don't have a like a high-tier phone, you're not going to be able to play this properly. I don't even know if they changed that to this very day, but I will guarantee you they probably didn't. Like, that should be the first priority. They should redo the entire engine, no matter how long it takes. They need to do what... Project CD or whatever did with um, Cyberpunk. They had to optimize the entire thing and do our whole redo and gave a huge 30 plus update for everybody. Right? That's the direction that these devs need to go in order to keep this game alive. I get that there's addicts out there who just love spending in the game, but I'm talking about the overall, like, this is the big picture. I'm not talking about just rewards. I'm talking about if you want to, you want new players, you want to keep people, you need to optimize the game. Again, the developers cited the complaint and then gave full details and a short preview of the new hover droid gadget that directly solved this problem. There's a reason why Kuro is so vocal about all of these new additions to the game. They know they'll be well received because these critiques are coming directly from the people who play their game. And that's why Kuro dedicated a significant portion of their live stream to simply beg their players for more feedback. Could you even dream of a response? Response like this from the Genshin devs. When you look at Kuro's impeccable. <laughs> Genshin devs are not gonna do that ever. They're just reading off of a script and just acting like role playing or whatever. Just some type of. I don't know what I'm talking about. My brain's dying, but you get you get the type of the type of aura or the feeling of watching a dev stream from Genshin Impact compared to. Weathering Waves. They're all just trying to read off a script and act. That's it. And just show you what the gameplay is all about, the trailers, and then all the updates that they're bringing. But at the end of the day, they're not looking out for the player base. Double track record of transparency and listening. You can't help but look back on version 5.0 and all of its new features with anything other than disgust. Why create so much anticipation? Yeah, just looking at all these features in Genshin just really put a bad taste in my mouth. I, I am so glad I got out of that finally. I'm so glad that I finally got out of Genshin Impact. If you still play Genshin Impact to this very day, I do not respect you at all. I will not give in to any of you who still play this game. It is just dog shit. It is complete dog shit, and I've wasted all my life. Okay, not all my life, but like three plus years. Three plus years on this garbage game. 
I am glad I got out. Hype across the player base by revealing highly requested additions like the custom artifact selector, but omit the fact that it's time gated by a huge fraction of the calendar year. Why hide the fact that only Natlin characters can actively engage with the new exploration mechanics, as well as the fact that these mechanics are obscenely nerfed? And out you know what I cannot stand about the Genshin community in general? Like, they're not caring about how to fix the game. They're mainly... Their, their, their main concern is representation in the nations. And, and they think it's just racism if, if our characters don't get colored a certain way of their, their skin, if they're not dark or whatever. Literally, that's the anime style, art style. Everybody's white. That's the problem. Everybody's white. Why do you even care? At the end of the day, you, you have attractive characters. Who gives a shit if they're light or dark? Like, why? Why worry about that when we need to worry about how the game needs to be fixed? Yet you got you guys are so sensitive. This is literal the libtard part of the community. This is the libtard left side problem of the community that only cares about skin color. They don't care about how the game is fixed or not. They they'll keep playing. They just care about Oh my gosh, they're not representing our our nation right. Oh my gosh, that 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 character is racist. Shut the up. Just Side shut of up. Land. Why hide I can't the fact stand the that all of these new pets are mainly for puzzles and mini games, and not a meaningful addition to combat? The harsh reality of these improvements is that Hoyaverse has been receiving and ignoring them for years, and now that Wuthering Waves is released and has demonstrated they have devs who actually just wait until Neverness to Everness comes out, or Project Mugen. Just wait until those come out. Genshin's already cooked. We're already gonna be leaving. I mean. I already know I'm going to jump over to those, and I haven't even played Genshin in a long time. Like, I don't care how many players there are in Genshin. The game's dead to me. The game's really dead, you should really consider that. Like, Genshin is no longer that game that that is going to change your life. It care really about ain't. the players. Now, all of these features are suddenly getting added to the game, but they all come with massive strings attached. Hoya yeah, there's always a cost to what Hoyoverse even brings out. Like, oh, we're gonna offer you free five star or something, but at the cost, here's the catch. Universe, from what we've seen in version 5.0, has a strategy focused around keeping information away from their players. They'll bring their community in with a juicy hook, claiming they've been listening to feedback, and then do a complete bait and switch by implementing that feedback in some of the worst ways possible, with a lot of it locked behind a credit card. When you look at all of these tactics from Hoyoverse, it's clear what their intent is. They're trying to make as much money as possible. That is the Chinese business after all. That's really the, the, the Chinese um, brainwashed programming that everybody in China is, has been like immersed in. Like China is one of like one of those countries, one of the biggest ones, biggest ones. One of the biggest ones for money. They only care about money. They only care about money. They don't care about who you are as a person. They don't care. They are just trying to run business. That's how they're programmed. Call me racist all you want. I ain't falling for it. I am not falling for China's corporate greed. ...from their players, and they're using the bait of new quality of life features and the disguise of listening to make it happen. That's why the new exploration mechanics might as well not exist if you don't pull on Atlan banners. That's why the artifact selector is obscenely time-gated with a nice little shortcut if you purchase the paid battle pass. That's why it took nearly four years for their weapon banner to have its pity reduced from infinite to 160. This company is greedy, and they won't shy away from basically <laughs> just give it your money for fuck's sake lying through omission in their version updates and probably lying about their actual intent with these changes to get their bag when you compare this mindset to that of kuro games it couldn't be any more different the words of Solon, Kuro CEO, ring louder now than ever before. Love your game, love your players, and love your team. As long as you survive, that's enough. 
right? You can see these heartfelt words in play across And I feel bad for a lot of developers and artists or whatever in Japan. They deserve better. They deserve better, but they don't get paid enough. They really don't get paid enough. And literally Japan has a budget that could pay them, but no. They really don't they re really don't want to pay out. And the next thing you know, Japan Japan's businesses try to sue everybody or, you know, silence them from any type of, like, discussion of their company's work, right? But yet they don't want to reward their, their team's efforts, their business's efforts in making their, their products. Asian countries are just fucked up. Every every country is fucked up, but a Asian countries are just worse. They're just worse. Man. Every update Kuro has made to Wuthering Waves, you can tell these developers actually play their game and want to enjoy it as well. Hopefully, we can see this kind of transparent, receptive behavior continue to spread across mainstream God. Like nobody should have to live to like should try to survive, right? They should live wealthy. They should live wealthy. That's all I'm saying. To developers. Genshin, like we've clearly seen, is making updates to fix their game, pressured by the competition. No, they're trying to fix their freaking revenue. That's Fishing it. Of weathering waves. They just need to take the lies, deception, and obviously clear ulterior motives out of it. And and and, and they know their player base. Hoyoverse knows their player base. They they have so many simps, so many stands, so many people that are willing to spend their money on their company. Because none of them are, 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 are even smart enough to even know the truth. To even think for their own selves. Literally, Hoyoverse simps, stands, whatever, are like Apple users, like iPhone users. They're wealthy, but dumb. And actually start respecting their players. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Peace out. Yeah, really, really good video. Really good video. It really sparked some nerves into my system for sure. Great video, bro. Great video. Uh, shout out to Saint Ontas, Saint Tontas, Saint Tontas. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, man. Really sorry. That was the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. I, I thought that was a really well uh, made video. Uh, thanks to him. Now I can, st now I can keep hating Gotcha Games. To this very day. Even though I'm still going to play the new ones. I'm going to still keep hating the gotcha business as a whole. For ruining gaming. Because it really ruined my life. It really ruined my life. And it ruined a lot of. Like. Of my way of playing games. And just living it in general. Like. Legalized gambling. These gotcha games really need to be shut down in my personal opinion i think gotcha games in my personal opinion should be shut down and we need actual games for once